I don't think there's another author since that has been co as controversial as you. So, cause I mean, you, with, with your writing, not only is the writing like extremely skillful and intense, which is why Oprah was attracted to it in the first place, but it does bring up the argument of, you know, what's fact, what's fiction, what's truth, what's, what's novel, you know, in a memoir, like you look at like, let's, let's just take any random example, Hemingway's A Movable Feast. That's like the, he calls it a memoir. It's like the biggest piece of fiction he wrote. Right. So there's, there's no, I don't believe any memoirs. And yet somehow you got picked on for, for like, almost like out of a lottery. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 whatever happened, happened. I don't really care. People always ask me about Oprah and, and my response, it was, is that it was an hour of my life, right? Somebody yelled at me for an hour of my life. Um, that happened before I ever went on Oprah. It certainly happened since. And, and so be it. Um, I wrote a book and I wrote a book that was designed to break rules, to defy conventions, to um, not be easily read, um, to not fit into places people wanted to put it. It's not, it is an addiction memoir and it's not at all, right? It is a memoir and it's not at all. It, it is a novel, but not at all. And, and when I think about art and books, I, I admire most the art and books that defy convention and break rules. I'm probably insane for saying this, but I've read your next book, Final Testament of the Holy Bible. I probably read that over a dozen times. Like I wow. love that book. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's the best book I wrote. Um, it's the least known in America and probably the best known outside of America. Um, that makes me happy. I, um, and I didn't even know that was your favorite book. I, that's why I was ever saying it. <laughs> no, that's my favorite book. Um, you know, it's a book about the coming of the Messiah, right? It, it's, a, it's, it's the kind of book anyone who's creative has probably thought, huh, what if I do this, a modern day Messiah or Jesus or not come back? What would it be like? And you did it and you pull it off perfectly thank you and it's just so amazing from how he's raised to the accident to everything that happens after that and you anyway i won't i won't i won't See, that actually is, pro is getting turned into a mini series oh really yeah with uh, a french actress um who's also a, a filmmaker and a director melanie laurent is going to direct it and um a company called make ready who um is a great LA production company is going to make it. Um, I'm stoked. I'm writing it. It'll be an eight part mini series about the coming of the Messiah, which I think is particularly appropriate given the age we're in, um, where a large portion of America believes that the Messiah is going to arrive any day. Um, and it's also, of course, um, very polarizing, right? Because you, I, you, you, you're going to have very strong opinions about who this person is. And we're living in a society now that's completely divided in half due to polarization. And I also think we're living in a time where, where a lot of the most deeply religious people would absolutely like, if you believe in Christ, right? Um, he was killed by people who were praying for his arrival, who did not believe he was the Messiah, who did not believe in the message he brought. And, and Christ's message was very simple. Um, which is love thy neighbor as you love thyself. Um, and if a guy like that arrived today, most of the people who spend their time praying for him would fucking kill him because he wouldn't say gays are bad and that people who don't believe what you believe are bad and that the poor should be ignored and that wars are good. He would say the fucking opposite of all of that. He would say love is love. And, and however you love is cool and, and they would kill him. And, you know, so given that your, your parents were supportive like that, a, why were you a fuck up as a kid? And B, I feel like writing sometimes plugs an insecurity. Like you can't express who you are. So maybe people will see who you are if they read a famous book by you. Where, where do you think the rage, the fucked upness, the insecurity kind of comes from? 
that got you going? I mean, there are theories about where rage comes from. Was it an early childhood experience? Was I born with it? I don't know. I don't give a fuck. Um, I know as a kid, I always liked the bad guys, right? Um, I, I, I When wrestling was big in the 80s as a kid, I always rooted for the heel. Um, I thought uh, outlaws were cool and criminals were cool and, and people who got in trouble were cool. Um, I never wanted to be the president of the United States. I would have much rather been Al fucking Compo, right? Um, I don't know why that is. It was just how it how it was. I started using drugs and alcohol pretty early. I started doing that because I always felt shit that I didn't understand and that hurt me. And I learned that if I used drugs and drank that um, they would make those feelings go away for a little while. What do you mean you felt? What, what did you feel that you didn't understand? As a kid? Um, why I was so angry, why I felt alone, why I was insecure. Um, I think every, everybody feels those things. It's just how do you deal with them? How deeply do you feel them? I don't know how deeply anybody else feels them. I know for me, they were confusing and I didn't like them. I didn't like being angry and drinking made it go away. The problem is once the alcohol or the drugs wear off, they come back and they're stronger. And, and, um, the chemicals are both a sedative to them and also an accelerant to them. Um, part of the book of, of, of making a book is the release of it and having people read it and doing things like this. Um, the other part is the act of writing it, right? I, I find the greatest joy in the act of writing it. I'm at my happiest in life um, when I'm alone in a room and there's a blank screen in front of me and my job that day is to fill it the fuck up. It makes me deeply happy. It, it's very satisfying. It, it, it's fun. Um, and I hadn't done it in years and I'd missed it. And he was right. I needed to go back to that and I needed to go back to who I was or who I am that allows me to do that. And um, do you think it worked? Yeah. After that conversation, like I followed his advice and I sat down a few days later. Um, I actually wrote the book in the office of the company. So I went to the people who work at the company and I was like, listen, it might get a little weird around here for a while. Um, I'm going to probably play music really loud. You might hear me yelling. You'll probably hear me talking to myself a lot. Um, just ignore it. And they all sort of laughed and, and I started writing the book and it felt good. It felt right. It made me happy. And so I just kept doing it um, until it was done. It was a joy to write. It, it brought me great satisfaction. I'm very happy it's out in the world now and people can read it and decide for themselves whether they dig it or not. But it, it's a huge win for me just doing it. Hey, thank you for listening to my show on YouTube today. I have a really special brand new episode coming out next week. But you can watch it early. Just click on the link right here or subscribe to the channel when you click on my face. And one more thing, don't forget to click the bell. I'll see you next time.